Hey everyone, Joe here. Welcome to part eight of the Audacity Accelerator course. In this part, I'm gonna show you how to record your electric guitar into Audacity. I'm gonna show you how to record in two ways, using direct input and using a microphone in front of an amp. So there are two main ways that you can record your electric guitar. Both of them have their own pros and cons. And there's the DI method, where you're recording through a DI box and into your audio interface. You don't need a mic or an amp. And then there's the miked method where you're putting a mic in front of a guitar amp basically and recording it as though you would record any mic. But first we're going to go over the DI method. Let's take a look at how to set it up. Now the DI method is by far the easiest um, and if you're living in somewhere where you can't make a huge amount of noise it's going to be the only option really. But you don't get the same kind of tone recording with DI. Um, as, as you do with an amp. But I'm going to show you both methods. The setup in Audacity itself is, is actually going to be exactly the same regardless of which method you use. So first I'm going to quickly show you how to set up your DI. Um, then we're going to do some recording in Audacity. Then I'll finish off just by giving you a couple of pointers when recording through an amp instead. So first the most important thing to consider is the guitar itself. You could have the best recording techniques and equipment um, in the world but if your guitar doesn't sound great then your recording's not going to sound great. So just make sure your strings are fresh, everything's in tune, uh, consider the the uh, which, which pickup you're going to be using and just put the volume right up to the top because you can adjust the volume on the way in using the audio interface. And then with your guitar all set up and sounding nice you're going to be plugging in the output of your guitar straight into one of these DI boxes into the input. Now you can skip the DI box process but I don't recommend it. They're cheap especially this, this Behringer one and they can help to get rid of any signal degradation uh, on the way in. And then the output of the DI box that's going to go back in and into one of the inputs in your audio interface. You might need to turn on the phantom power in your audio interface depending on the DI box. And then in Audacity, you've got to make sure your audio interface has been set up. If you haven't set up your audio interface in Audacity yet, I'll leave a link on, on the screen now to show you how to do that. But ultimately, you're going to be looking at the device toolbar in Audacity. You want the input set to your audio interface line in and the output set to your audio interface line out. That's pretty much all you need to worry about. If you hit record now, you should see some signal coming through. And there we go. I will go into the session in a second just to give you a better view uh, and see exactly what I'm doing there. And you should be seeing some signal in your audio interface if your interface has a, has a signal light. And if you hit record, you should be seeing your audio recording. But let's dive into the session and I'll give you a quick rundown of the settings that you need and things that you need to look out for. So here we are in the Audacity session, I've got my guitar all plugged in and set up through the DI box and into the audio interface. Uh, if you don't already have your audio interface set up, whether you're recording DI or mic um, in Audacity, then check out part five where I go over how to do that. And just a quick overview for now, ultimately you want your input and your output on your device toolbar set uh, to your audio interface. So I've got mine set to my Scarlett 80 i 8 Focusrite interface. You're also going to be recording mono, unless you're dual miking, um, which we're not right now, we're just using the DI. And then you should also be making sure, again, that you've got signal coming through. If you play your guitar, you should see, I'm just going to make a little adjustment on my audio interface. You should see the signal coming through onto your audio interface. It shouldn't be clipping. Most audio interfaces will have a little red light, a clip light, to let you know if the signal's hitting that zero dB mark because you don't want it to be going anywhere near that um, or it's going to cause some nasty digital distortion. So play the loudest part of whatever you're going to be playing uh, beforehand before you start recording and make sure that's not going to be clipping. You can also monitor that in Audacity itself by clicking on your meter toolbar there on the recording level. If we play something now, okay, so it's not getting anywhere near the zero mark, which is great. We should be safe to record. Have a think about what pickup you want to be using, uh, the settings on your amp, make sure it sounds great just coming out of the amp. Um, if you're using DI, you're just gonna have to wait and, and listen back after. But either way, we want to be listening back to our recordings and then making adjustments before doing the full take. So to get recording, you just want to hit the record button in transport bar or you can press the R key. And 
then after you finish recording, you just want to have a listen back, check the tone. Okay, that sounds good to me. It's a nice strong signal. Um, it's a nice balanced warm tone for, for a DI, a clean DI anyway. If I was, Normally if I was recording DI, um, I'd put, put it through an amp simulator after the fact when I'm mixing. Um, but for now that just gives you an idea. Now if you're recording with an amp, you might find after recording that it doesn't sound quite how it sounds from the amp. So you can make a, a few adjustments to the tone settings, um, the placement of the mic and things like that. And then if you're going to be overdubbing, if you hold the shift key and press R rather than just pressing R to record, it changes it to punch in or record new track. And then wherever the cursor is, it will record onto a new track so you can overdub your your original recording. If you just hit record or hit R, it will put it right to the end. And you can just carry on recording from where you were. I'll be going over editing, mixing and exporting your audio in later parts of this course. Now, as I mentioned, a quick overview of recording through a mic and a guitar amp instead. The process is the same when it gets into Audacity. It's just that there's going to be something else plugged into your audio interface, which is going to be the mic. Um, you're not going to be needing a, needing a DI box of this. You're just going to be plugging a dynamic mic um, directly into one of the inputs in your audio interface. You can use a condenser mic, but dynamic mics work really well with guitar amps. And especially when you're recording at home, if you're recording in a room that doesn't sound fantastic, um, a dynamic mic is the perfect option. A great choice of mic is the Shure SM SM57, and you're gonna be pointing that directly um, at one of the speaker cones. The closer to the middle of the cone it is, the brighter sound you're gonna get. But you can point the mic right up to the to the grill, not touching, um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't actually touch the grill to, so you can avoid any vibration. Um, but yeah, but almost touching and then just set your levels accordingly and record exactly the same way as we've covered already in Audacity. Now you should have some awesome electric guitar recorded into Audacity. Don't forget to hit file and save so you don't lose any work. In the next part, we're going to be looking at how to record acoustic guitar. So hit that subscribe button and the bell icon below so you're the first to know when that video arrives. Leave a like if this video helped you and let me know in the comments section below how are you recording your electric guitar, DI or mic and amp. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part nine.